I want to talk about hate speech as a kind of poison, and that's a metaphor, of course. Um, my reason to use this metaphor is to go back to uh, a very old, by recent standards, piece of hate speech that some of you might have heard of that was published by Julius Streicher. Streicher was a publisher in Nazi Germany uh, who published Der Sturmer. Have any of you heard of Der Sturmer? Okay, the Stormer, uh, the Daily Stormer, Der Sturmer. Uh, the current website, the racist website, uh, the Daily Stormer, is um, uh, a current uh, reincarnation or sees itself as a current reincarnation of uh, this uh, weekly sort of newspaper, I think it was weekly, uh, that was published by Julius Streicher. Uh, and uh, Streicher was involved not in the official propaganda wing of the Nazi party during uh, the Second World War, um, uh, during that period, but he was uh, involved with unofficial sponsorship uh, from the Nazi party and he w the Der, Der Sturmer was immensely popular. The, another thing that uh, Streicher published was a range of publications directed at children. So Der Sturmer wasn't directed at children, uh, the Stormer. Uh, it was directed at adults. And in fact, some people think that it's a uh, mix of um, sensational stories of Jewish violence and uh, sen mixed up with sensational uh, and lurid uh, sexual content was part of what gave it a, a big uh, presence in the uh, culture. And uh, people who couldn't afford copies of Der Sturmer would could read them on the village uh, on village notice boards because they were pinned up there. So it had a very wide readership. The um, uh, the poisonous uh, uh, hate speech that I'm going to think about though is a piece called Der Giftpilz. Um, this is. I'm going to move on uh, with your help to talk about more contemporary versions of hate speech. But poison was the central metaphor of Nazi uh, anti-Semitic propaganda. Der Giftpilz, as some of you who know German will know, uh, means the toadstool or the poisonous mushroom. And in um, this story, there's a picture of a small boy with his mother walking through a woodland, and they are looking for mushrooms on a nice, fine autumn day, like today. And as they're looking through the forest, uh, his mother gives him a warning and says, you've got to look out for those ones, the gift pills, the poisonous mushrooms. The poisonous mushrooms look just like the healthy ones, uh, but they are death. They are deadly. They uh, will kill you. Uh, they are death to our folk. And the little boy says, just like the Jewish people, <laughs> or something like this. So there's this ongoing metaphor between um, the poison of, uh, of something that looks completely innocent and healthy. Um, and that's one mention of poison. It's part of the content of a very important bit of German propaganda to see the Jewish people as looking normal, but being poisonous, like a poisonous mushroom. Um, and um, one thing to say about that is not only is it making it them, it's associating them with deadliness, it's also making them impossible to trust. It's also making the hate speech impossible to answer. So imagine uh, uh, your, a child is learning that their Jewish neighbor is uh, like a poisonous toadstool, and the Jewish neighbor says, no, I'm not. <laughs> and all of this goes to prove that you're exactly the have the innocent appearance uh, of a toadstool as, a, as opposed to a mushroom. So there's a sense in which the, the credibility denial is part of the message as well as the deadliness. Uh, and these sometimes go hand in hand. Credibility denial, which silences the possibility of counter protest. That's one of the things that interests me about certain kinds of hate speech, that they are very hard to answer because they damage the credibility of somebody who might want to fight back. Um, so another uh, place that the uh, metaphor of poison comes up is perhaps more accurately with the uh, Nuremberg uh, court trial of uh, Julius Streicher himself. His words were described as poison. His words were described as a poison that had contaminated and, and infected, I think was the word, uh, 
suitably translated, infected the minds of the uh, German people and turned them against uh, uh, Jews. So we had this uh, metaphor of the Jews as poison and then of Stryker's words as themselves uh, poison. Um, what happened to Stryker? It might be shocking to think of now, uh, but at the Nuremberg trials, he was hanged. Uh, after the Nuremberg trials, he was found guilty um, of, of a hate crime through what he had published. And as far as I know, this is the only time, I might be wrong, I'm not a historian, I'm just a philosopher, uh, just a philosopher. Um, uh, I think this might be the only time that someone got hanged uh, or uh, was suffered capital punishment uh, for a speech crime. We are so used to the idea that speech should be protected no matter how awful. In this particular case, the speech was considered so heinous that it deserved a death penalty. I'm not going to comment on that, apart from to, to say I don't think the death penalty is appropriate for anyone. Uh, that's a different topic. Um, but it is a reminder about how seriously certain sorts of hate speech have been taken historically. And it's also wor uh, worth reminding ourselves of that in a context where different countries right now have very different perspectives on hate speech. So um, to turn to that, one important picture of hate speech, and this applies to Der Sturmer, is, hate, is as a, a kind of propaganda. In this case, the propaganda is propaganda that makes somebody seem inferior or dangerous or not credible, various things that can, be, can go wrong with it. I'm not s offering this as a definition of hate speech. I'm saying it's something that hate speech very often tends to do. Um, and that idea of hate speech as a certain kind of propaganda uh, is embedded in the UN Convention um, on, on, uh, uh, for the Eradication of, um, of uh, hate, hate, the 69 Convention. Is that what I'm thinking of? Anyway, I'll read it to you. This is the UN's um, uh, condemnation of hate speech. It's in light of this convention, by the way, that we have hate speech laws. So does uh, Germany, so does France. Uh, many Western dem democracies do, but not the United States for reasons that we can discuss. Um, here's the UN. State parties condemn all propaganda and all organizations which are based on ideas of theories of superiority of one race or group of persons or one color of, or ethnic origin, which attempt to justify or promote racial hatred and discrimination in any form, and undertake to adopt immediately uh, positive measures designed to eradicate all incitement to or acts of such discrimination, shall declare an offense punishable by law all dissemination of ideas based on racial superiority or hatred, incitement to racial discrimination, as well as all acts of violence or incitement to such acts against any race or group of person of another color or ethnic origin, and also the provision of any assistance to racist activities. So that is what the UN Convention says, to which uh, m most Western democracies, excluding uh, the United States, have signed up. That's why we have laws uh, against incitement to racial hatred, and uh, France and Germany have laws against uh, Holocaust denial, uh, and, and so that's the, that's the part of the legal backdrop. And so it's worth mentioning the historic uh, origins of the concerns about hate speech before we go on to discuss it now. So I said that one idea about hate speech, which is there in what I just read, is the idea of hate speech as propaganda. Also, by the way, hate speech as incitement. That was implicit in that. I can say a bit more about that in a second. A different idea about hate speech is the idea of words that wound. I take that title, words that wound, um, from a very famous uh, uh, piece of work by uh, some philosophers, legal theorists, and critical race theorists, um, which discusses hate speech as a kind of assault. It, dis it draws on American um, fighting words doctrine and American doctrine about assault, and says that certain sorts of hate speech um, are like a physical assault on someone. So there you can see what's going on. It's not, oh, is someone reading some propaganda and getting false or damaging views about that other group? Instead, what's happening is these words are being used directly against the target as a kind of uh, attack. 
Um, so I'm talking here about two uh, roles of hate speech. It can be an attack or it can be propaganda. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.